All right, so let's talk about something that affects a ton of people. G or D. You know, like that burning feeling heartburn. We've got this in-depth guide here on gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD as it's known, the goal. To really help you get the basics, figure out when it's time to call the doctor, and check out what treatment options are out there. By the end of this deep dive, you'll be ready to take charge, whether you're personally dealing with GERD or just want to learn more. You know, what I find so interesting is how many people just think it's like a little indigestion. But GERD, it can actually be way more serious than that. For sure. So let's break it down. What's actually happening in our bodies when we get heartburn? Well, it all starts with this uh, little ring of muscle at the bottom of your esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter, or LES. It's kind of like a valve between your esophagus and your stomach. When it's working the way it should, it opens to let food down and then closes up tight. But with GERD, this valve, well, it doesn't close all the way, and that lets stomach acid splash back up into the esophagus. So like a leaky faucet, but with stomach acid instead of water. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. And that acid irritates the esophagus, which leads to inflammation, what we call esophagitis. And that's what causes that classic heartburn feeling. I used to think I just had like a sensitive stomach, especially after spicy food. But how do we know if it's just like occasional heartburn after a big meal or if it's actually GERD? Yeah, it really comes down to how often it happens and how long it lasts. Occasional heartburn, no big deal probably. But if you're dealing with heartburn or regurgitation where food and liquid come back up a few times a week, or if it's just constant, well, that's when we start to think it might be GERD. Okay, so it can be tricky. It's not always super obvious. Right. And you know, while food can be a trigger, there are other things that can up your risk for GERD. Interesting. So it's more than just what we eat. Exactly. Things like smoking can weaken that LES muscle. And pregnancy can cause hormonal changes that also affect the LES. Wow. So many factors to consider. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, a hiatal hernia where part of the stomach pushes up through the diaphragm can also be a factor. Yeah. And being overweight or having obesity puts extra pressure on that LES, making it more likely to leak. Okay, so much more to it than I realized. But even if someone has all these risk factors, does that mean they definitely have GERD? Not necessarily. That's why seeing a doctor is so important for getting a proper diagnosis. They can really help figure out what's going on. Makes sense. So we've talked about risk factors. But what about those food triggers we mentioned before? Is there like a list of things people should just avoid? There are some common culprits, but it really depends on the person. Things like chocolate, mint, alcohol, fatty foods, yeah. and even caffeine can relax the LES and make reflux more likely. And of course, pepper and spicy foods can be a problem for a lot of people. Right, so paying attention to what you eat and noticing any patterns is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping a food diary can be a big help Jot down what you eat and when you have symptoms. That can help you figure out what your personal triggers are. That's a great tip. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good handle on the basics now. But when does GERD go from being like an annoyance to something more serious that we need to be concerned about? That's a really important question. If you start experiencing chest pain, it's essential to rule out a heart attack right away. Right, because chest pain can be scary. How can someone tell the difference? You know, it can be tough, and that's why it's so important to get medical help. Heart attack pain is often described as this crushing pressure or tightness, while GERD pain is more of a burning sensation. But honestly, if you have any doubt at all, just call 911. Don't take any chances. Yeah, you definitely don't want to mess around with chest pain. There are some other things to watch out for, too, like if you start vomiting blood or ha having trouble swallowing, or you lose weight for no reason. Those are all signs that something more serious might be going on. You should see a doctor right away. So it's easy to just ignore things sometimes, but it's really important to pay attention to what our bodies are telling us. Right, so let's say someone thinks they might have GERD. What can they do about it? I mean, what kind of treatments are out there? Well, the good news is there are a lot of different options, and often it starts with some simple lifestyle changes. Okay, like what? Give us the details. Well, one thing that can help is eating smaller meals more often. This keeps your stomach from getting too full, which puts pressure on that LES muscle. And, of course, avoiding those trigger foods we talked about is key. Oh, and uh, think about that late-night snacking. Eating right before bed can actually make reflux worse. So no more midnight snacks. Yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah. Another thing you can try is using gravity to your advantage. Elevating the head of your bed 6 to 8 inches can help keep the acid down while you sleep. So a lot of different strategies, not just popping pills. Exactly. Hmm. And if those don't quite cut it, there are some over-the-counter medications that can help. Antacids like Tums can neutralize stomach acid for quick relief. Then there are H2 blockers like Pepsid, 
which actually reduce how much acid your stomach makes. Those are good first steps. Right. And if those aren't enough, there are proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, like Prelosec PPIs block a specific enzyme that's involved in acid production, so they're even more powerful. Some are available over the counter, but for the stronger ones, you'll need a prescription. So there's a whole stepped approach. Start with lifestyle changes, maybe try some over-the-counter meds. And if those aren't working, talk to your doctor about stronger options. You got it. And it's important to remember that these medications, they're mainly for managing symptoms and helping your esophagus heal. They don't necessarily get to the root cause of GERD. What about surgery? Is that ever an option? Surgery is usually a last resort when medications haven't worked, or if there are complications like a hiatal hernia. One common procedure is called fundoplication. Fundoplication. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds intense. It does sound kind of scary, but it's actually pretty effective. The surgeon wraps the upper part of the stomach around the lower esophageal sphincter, which strengthens that valve and prevents acid reflux. So it's like giving the LES muscle some extra support. Exactly. There's also magnetic sphincter augmentation, or MSA, where they implant a ring of magnetic beads around the LES. The beads help keep the valve closed when you're not swallowing, but they separate to let food through. And then there's the strutta procedure, which uses radiofrequency energy to tighten the LES muscles. Wow, there are so many options. It's amazing how far medical technology has come. Yeah, it really is. But even with all these advancements, it's important to remember that managing GERD is often an ongoing thing, you know? It's about finding what works best for you and working with your doctor to adjust your treatment plan as needed. So it's not one size fits all. Definitely not. And it's really important to remember that even if you find relief, maintaining healthy habits and being mindful of those triggers is key to keep GERD under control long term. This has been super helpful. I feel like I've learned so much about GERD. Any final thoughts for our listeners before we wrap things up? I think the biggest thing to remember is that G or R, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's all about paying attention to your body, being proactive with those lifestyle changes, and working with your doctor to find what works best for you. And maybe skipping that second cup of coffee before bed. Yeah, probably a good idea. So there you have it, folks. We've got a deep dive into GR2, covered all the basics, the red flags to watch out for, and all the different treatments available, from lifestyle changes to meds to even surgery. GER is common, but it is treatable. So use what you've learned today to take control of your health. And if you're having any of those serious symptoms we talked about, don't wait. Get medical help right away. Definitely. Early intervention can really make a difference in preventing complications later on. Couldn't agree more. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into GRD. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and take care of yourselves.